who is the greatest it had been a busy day at the court of king akbar there were many people who had come to seek justice as the day at the court came to an end king akbar asked a question to one of the courtiers who do you think is the greatest lord indra or me lord indra jahapana how dare you say that what do you think who is the greatest lord indra or me you jahapana you are greater than lord indra in fact you are the greatest if what you say is true prove it to me now the courtier was in a fix he looked at birbal pleading as he knew that birbal was the only person who could get him out of this situation it is very easy to prove jahapana in fact lord brahma himself faced this dilemma lord brahma had made two idols one was of lord indra and one was of you jahapana he then weighed both the idols in a heavenly scale to see which was larger and greater as your idol was heavier the idol came to earth and as lord indra's idol was light it went to heaven this is how he rules the heaven and you the earth king akbar was impressed by birbal's witty answer and laughed out loud why god helps us himself one day as king akbar and birbal were walking in the royal garden king akbar asked why is said that hindu gods behave so strangely our king respects hinduism and islam equally so why did he ask such a strange question i am sure it is to test me lord krishna is a fine example of that doesn't your lord krishna have any servants each time a devotee calls for help the lord himself wants to see the devotee's needs surely he can employ others to do this work oh yes surely he can but birbal had a plan in the evening the king and birbal were walking by the river of the royal garden look birbal there comes prince kuram's guardian carrying the prince as they got closer the guardian slipped and the king saw his beloved grandson fall into the deep river immediately the king jumped into the water to rescue his grandson this is not prince kuram it's just a wax replica of him as king akbar was being helped out by the guards birbal spoke jahapna why did you jump into the water to rescue your grandson when you have so many guards at your beck and call my grandson is precious to me i love him dearly i just couldn't stop myself seeing my grandson in trouble now you see my lord this is the reason why lord krishna who loves his devotees comes to their help himself i see your point clearly birbal had planned this incident he had got the idol made in an exact replica of prince kuram and also had the guardian to enact the incident birbal the detective kalu the gardener worked at the royal gardens of king akbar he was a very hard working man one day kalu went to birbal crying sir help me i am ruined all my life saving have been stolen i worked so hard and had saved a thousand gold coins but they are gone i will help you now stop crying and tell me where you kept your savings i had hid it in a safe place where nobody could find it it was under the pear tree in the royal garden okay now you can go i will call you when i need you one would know about the money bag only if someone dug up under the tree so who would need to dig in the pear tree hmm birbal asked all the vaidyas and the hakims to come to him does any part of the pear tree serve as a medicine pear fruit is useful to the body as it gives us nutrients but the flowers and leaves are of no use to us so i have used roots of a pear tree for treatment i recently mixed some herbs with a paste made from it who got the roots of the pear tree for you my patient servant sir please call that servant immediately did you dig up the roots of the pear tree yes sir i did where was the tree in the royal garden you are a thief and you need to be punished give back the gold coins that you found there 
और आई एम सॉरी सर प्लीज फर्गिव मी गिव बैक ऑल गोल्ड कॉइन्स I forgive you. You must promise that you will not take anything that is not yours. The servant returned the money bag. Birbal summoned Kalu and gave the money bag to him. Kalu thanked Birbal and was very happy that he had got his life savings. Birbal's Khichdi. One day, King Akbar and his queen were walking by the river Yamuna. They sat by the river side. and the queen put her hand in the water to play oh my this water is so cold no one can stay in it even for a few minutes later in the court king akbar made an announcement i will give a thousand gold coins to a person who can stand neck deep in the river the whole night he will not have anything to keep him warm hearing this announcement an old man came to the court Because of his old age he had no work he thought this was a good way to earn the money for his last years of life he came to the court to accept the challenge guards take him to the river and keep watch at the river the old man got into the cold water this water is very very cold but i should strengthen my mind to it the night was cold and the water was getting colder Hours passed by slowly. The old man occupied his thoughts with the money he would get from the king. At last, it was dawn. The guards took the old man to the court. Bravo, old man! Here is your reward. Guards, tell me how did he spend the time in the water? Jahanpana, he spent all his time looking at the light of the palace. A courtier wanted to show that he was very clever. Old man. You are a cheat. You cheated. You kept yourself warm by the light from the palace. Jahanpana, you should not get the reward. King Akbar sent the man away without the reward. The next day, Birbal did not come to the court. So, the king and the courtiers went to see him. Why did you not come to the court today, Birbal? Oh king, I am cooking khichdi. But it can't take a whole day, Birbal. Jahanpana I don't know why but it is just not getting cooked. Let's go see it. As they went into the kitchen yard, they saw that the pot was tied 7 feet above the fire. Are you a fool, Birbal? How will the khichdi get cooked when you have tied the pot so far away from the fire? Jahanpana, if the old man could get the warmth of the light from the palace, which is thousands of feet away, why can't the pot of khichdi get cooked at a distance of just 7 feet? King Akbar realized that he had been unjust to the old man and immediately asked the old man to come. He rewarded the old man the money he had promised. The art of fortune telling. The courtiers in the court of King Akbar were very jealous of Birbal's favored position. They tried several times to trick Birbal and get him in the bad books of King Akbar. This time too they had a plan. When Birbal was not in the court, Jahanpana, we have observed that Birbal has not been paying attention to his work at court. He is busy learning the art of fortune telling and other related magic. We are fed up with his arrogance that he can do anything with his magic power. King Akbar knew that this was some kind of a trick to get Birbal into trouble. He played along to see how Birbal would get out of this. As Birbal arrived at the court, Birbal, I have lost my ruby ring a few minutes back. Can you, with your magic, locate the ring for me? Yes, Jahanpana. You will see that the ring will automatically reach your finger. Birbal took a piece of paper and drew some abstract lines on it. He then asked King Akbar to place his finger, of which he had lost the finger ring. Birbal then took some grains of rice and murmured a mantra. and threw it on the courtiers one of the courtiers was scared he thought that the ring might leave his pocket just like how birbal had said it would so he held on to it tightly birbal spotted the courtier clutching his pocket jahanpana i have found the ring it is in this courtier's pocket the courtiers realized that they had been tricked king akbar had given the ring to the courtier to hide But the nervous reaction of the courtier had given him away. 
King Akbar praised Birbal for his intelligence and gifted him the same ring. What I desire. During the reign of King Akbar lived a miser. He lived in a small hut made of mud and straw. One day a fire broke out in his hut. Fire, fire, help, somebody help. My hut is on fire. Hearing the cries, the villagers came with buckets of water. They tried their best to control the flames, but the fire kept burning. The miser started crying loudly. Why are you crying so hard? After all, it is just a straw hut. Oh sir, you do not know. In that hut I have my life savings. There is a box full of gems and gold coins buried in the corner near the stove. Don't worry. I will go in and get the box for you. But you should promise me that after I get the box, I will give you what I desire and the rest will be mine. Okay, okay. I promise. Now rush before it is too late. The goldsmith jumped into the leaping flame to get the box. Soon he came out with the box and minor burns on his hands. Thank you so much. The miser went to take the box. Hold on. I said I would give you what I desire. Here, I desire to give you this box. The gems and gold coins are mine. The goldsmith handed the miser an empty box. Hey, that's cheating. I agree that you help me out. For that, you can take half of my savings. No, I will not agree. A promise is a promise. I said what I desire. The argument continued for some time. At last, they decide to go to Birbal for justice. Birbal listened to their problem. Hmm. Okay, goldsmith. What do you desire? Pat came the reply. The gems and the coins, sir. As per your promise, the gems and the gold coins belong to the miser. as you had promised to give him what you desire the goldsmith realized that birbal had played with his own words and there was nothing he could do about it the miser thanked birbal for getting his savings back and left with a big smile on his face the most beautiful king akbar had many courtiers in his court but his favorite was birbal this made the other courtiers very jealous They made plans to get Birbal into trouble with King Akbar but always failed. Today they involve Hussein Khan, the king's brother-in-law. You are the queen's brother and you do not hold any post. In fact, you must hold the post which Birbal holds. Oh, that's impossible. I can't do anything about it. Even if I would like the post, Birbal is a king's favorite. Why not? Just ask your sister to put in a word for you. The king will never turn down the queen's request. Hussein Khan went to his sister the queen and told her of his wish. He asked her to help him. In the evening when King Akbar went to visit his queen, she looked very unhappy and in a bad mood. Dear queen, you look unhappy. What's the matter? My brother holds no post in your court and that makes me very unhappy. No problem, dear. I will give him a post. No, I want the post that Birbal holds for my brother. But that's not possible, Begum. Hussein Khan is foolish and stubborn. With responsibility, he will get better. But Begum, one needs the intelligence of Birbal to help in the royal administration. Furthermore, I have no reason to miss Birbal. a plan for that tomorrow evening you ask birbal to fetch me to the royal garden for a stroll with you i will refuse and when birbal won't be able to persuade me you can dismiss him in anger king akbar agreed next evening he called birbal to the garden birbal the queen is angry with me can you please go and ask her to join me for a stroll here you must try and please her if you don't bring her here I will dismiss you. I will give you a post to my brother-in-law. Birbal realized it was a plan to get him dismissed. He went to the queen's chamber. Rani Sahiba, the king has asked you to join him for a Just then, a servant came and secretly whispered something in Birbal's ear. The queen could only hear three words, the most beautiful. Sorry Rani Sahiba, the plan has changed now. The queen was disturbed after overhearing the words the most beautiful. 
After the servant spoke, Birbal stopped requesting me to come to the garden. Oh my God, has the king found some beautiful woman for company? Maybe that's why Birbal talked of a changed plan. Out of jealousy, the queen rushed to the royal garden. There she saw the king all alone. Tegum, what are you doing here? You said you would not listen to Birbal. What made you come here? The queen had no answer to it. Clever Birbal had used his intelligence to secure his position. The Washerman and the Potter there lived a potter and a washerman in Akbar's kingdom. One day, the washerman's donkey got into the courtyard of the potter and broke all the pots. The washerman paid for all the damages done by the donkey, but the potter was still angry. So, the next day, he went to the royal court to meet King Akbar. Greetings, Jahapana. Tell me, what brings you here? Jahapana, my friend just returned from Iran. He told me that the Shah of Iran is very impressed by country and the people. But... But what? But he said that the Indian elephants are black and dirty. His army has white and clean elephants, which makes him very proud. So, what should we do about it? Jahapana, the Shah of Iran, has large groups of washmen who wash the elephants twice a day and that's the reason they're white. King Akbar is suspicious about the man's intention. Oh, is that so? Then ask all the washermen in the city to get together and wash our elephants daily. Jahapana, there is no need to call all the washermen. The washerman who stays close to my house is very hardworking and he will be enough for the job. Hearing this, King Akbar is sure the man is up to some mischief. Guards, go fetch this washerman. The washerman was got before the king. Scrub the elephants till they are white or you will be punished. The washerman on seeing the potter knew that the potter had put him into trouble. He went to the shed and scrubbed and scrubbed the elephants but they remained dark. Next morning, Why are the elephants still dark? Jahapana, I am sure if we have a big pot to dip the elephants while scrubbing it, surely we will have whiter elephants than the Shah of Iran. King Akbar knew that the washerman was getting back at the potter now. Ask the potter to make a pot in which an elephant can fit. The potter took a week to make the pot. He got the finished pot to the shed. As soon as the elephant put his foot into the pot, it broke. You have made a weak pot. Go, make a better one. The potter knew that he was caught and fell at King Akbar's feet. You are a liar and a mischief maker. You will be punished. Well done. How did you get such an idea to get back at the pot? I will reward you for such an excellent idea. No Jahabana, I can't take the credit for the idea. I went to the wise Birbal Sahib for help and he told me what to do. King Akbar called Birbal and praised him for such an excellent idea. Two Grateful Beings King Akbar appreciated Birbal's wit and intelligence and liked to challenge him once in a while. Today was one of those days. He made a strange request to Birbal. Birbal I want you to get me two living beings. One must be a grateful one who is ever ready to show his gratefulness and return it. Another one should be someone who takes the favors for granted and is never satisfied. Yes, Jahapana. Tomorrow, I will bring them to court with me. Next day, Jahapana, here are the two beings that you asked for. Okay, Birbal. Explain the reasons to me. This is my dog, Sheru. He is a grateful being. I give him merely a piece of bread every day and in return he protects my house from burglars. He is always happy to see me. A dog always remembers the one time you would have fed him, even if you would have shooed him away the next time. The dog will be grateful for that one time and become a faithful friend. It will recognize you wherever you are and will come at once if you call out to it. What about the other? This is my son-in-law. 
he receives gifts and favors from me the bride's father all his life a wealthy father would empty all his treasures but a son-in-law is never satisfied he expects favors all the time he is grateful for a moment but then takes it for granted he thinks his position entails the gifts you are quite right birbal i agree with you now i sentence the son-in-law to death for his ungratefulness jahan pana i was not talking of my son-in-law in particular all sons in law are generally like this are you going to sentence all of them to death also jahapna you must not forget that you too are a son in law hearing this the king and the courtiers burst out into laughter once again the king was impressed with birbal's wit and intelligence and pardoned the son in law <laughs>